you'd still be committing murder. And if you commit murder, you're going to be chased by the guards and I guarantee you that you will fail at solving any mysteries in this town. Uh, but I wanna have a cool personality. Hey, what's up everybody, Skytsinder here, welcome to another Jindy Green Text video. How are you guys doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Before jumping into today's video, just a quick reminder if you're not yet subscribed to the channel too, consider doing so now, it would help me out a lot and you know, if you're enjoying this content, why not? It only takes a moment, you can undo it later. So yeah, thanks so much for that and I hope you enjoyed the video. Taurus the Wonder Horse My party of six was playing Curse of Strahd, prepping the trip of taking Irina to the town of Valaki. The DM calculates that it would be around a two-day trip by cart. Realizing that we would have to camp in Barovia, we stocked up on the trip. One player decides to also hire two guards to assist. We end up getting a cart with what we thought were a few horses. We then proceeded to set off from the town of Barovia. The druid decided to convince the horses to move a little faster. After a successful roll, the horses started to gallop at full speed. The DM told us that we were able to make it to our destination in half a day. The party decided to reward the horses by getting them some oats. The DM corrected us by saying that it was one horse. This one horse pulled a cart containing six adventurers, two fully armed guards, a fully armored arena and gear for a two-day journey by itself in a quarter of the time that we established. We decided to name him Taurus the Wonder Horse. Speak very much related. <laughs> okay, okay, that's definitely not where I thought the story was going. I, I thought the, the DM didn't give them horses and like, I don't know, the horses were gonna betray them somehow or something. Um, <laughs> that was a plot twist that I didn't expect, I guess. No, violence is not a personality trait. Be me, GM running horror mystery campaign in 5th edition. Be not me. Party's Conquest Paladin. In session 0, the group all agrees to a detective campaign where players keep a low profile while investigating supernatural occurrences. Session 1, the paladin brandishes his weapon while walking in town, glowering and shouting at NPCs as he walks by. Later, he kills an unarmed and unconscious civilian in the middle of the street, in broad daylight, for no reason outside of that civilian called me a bad name earlier. The session ends and I'm scratching my head on how to deal with this massive derailment of the entire campaign at the get-go. I reach out to the paladin, one by one. GM, I'll be honest, if we keep things the way they are, you're gonna spend the entire rest of the campaign avoiding guards. You burned up half of your leads with that one act. So we can retcon it so that you didn't commit the murder like an idiot. Paladin, I wasn't being an idiot. He insulted my honor. I was being a badass by showing how I don't take <gasps> Killing an unarmed, unconscious, innocent civilian is not badass. Do you wanna retcon it so that you never killed him? What if we retconned it that he had a knife on him? Then he isn't unarmed. You'd still be committing murder. Okay, what if we retconned that I used lay on hands to make him conscious and then killed him? You'd still be committing murder. Okay, what if we retconned it that he was a criminal with a shady past? You'd still be committing murder. And if you commit murder, you're going to be chased by the guards and I guarantee you that you will fail at solving any mysteries in this town. Uh, but I wanna have a cool personality. Okay, then show yourself stoic in the face of danger. Take no sh from a worthy challenger. Defend the weak from the strong. Being violent for the sake of violence itself isn't a personality. Fine. Session 2 rolls around and the party is fighting off a group of cultists. Everything goes well and everyone starts searching the cultists' bodies for clues. The paladin chimes in. I desecrate their bodies, toss them outside in broad daylight and piss on them like a badass. He does this in front of the local priest who the party wanted to interview and was now fleeing the scene looking for guards. I should note, the paladin player isn't a bad dude, just a terrible role player. Every character is always taking a movie trope and building an entire character around it. When I tell him that characters need motivation, the paladin player honestly believes that showing how tough I am by being violent is my motivation. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what words to use for this. <laughs> I, I, it's really weird to me that the DM or the, what yeah I think it's the DM telling the story right the DM calling him not a bad dude IRL just a terrible R uh, role player but this is just I don't know this is a lot I mean 
don't know, this seems like a lot. Please, not the armored car. Be me, DM in a homebrew cyberpunk D&D 5th edition game. Be not me, the players. Agent 47 with hair, Punchy Muck Punch Punch and Hackety Sacks. The crew has had difficulties in Savage Worlds. Life.x has stopped working a bunch of times. Both the DM and the players are new to rules. The DM makes epic damage rolls. The DM didn't want epic damage rolls. The DM also makes the rolls openly. And yeah, the DM is a dumbass. The group decision? Return to D&D 5th edition rules. I'm back, that gif. Don't like any 5th edition cyberpunk anything that I find online. I'll make my own cyberpunk with Neo Blackjack and digital <laughs> One month later, I decide to make a nice, easy mission. Ominous background music that MP3. Sketchy Dan hires a group to intercept a package. Sketchy Dan doesn't want to pay postage and handling. Sketchy Dan is exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> Hackity Sacks does Hackity Hacks. The processing facility is lightly defended and the workers and security are pussies. Insurance will cover lost goods but not dead people. There's a big open space out back to break in with, and there's a small secluded space up front for a con job. It's now time to plan the heist. Let's hit the delivery truck. The armored truck. The armored truck in a world filled with violence and guns. The armored truck that knocks punks down all day, every day. That armored truck? Yup. Oh no, that wav. What? Like... Hit the package during the relatively unsecure drop-off between car and apartment? Nah, no, like, hit the armored truck at a stoplight. Oh no, that wav. The party is street level. They have no explosives, they have no high-power anti-armor rifle, they have no car, I am not being subtle at all about chances, and I am not being subtle about it being a privately owned urban tank. DM.x has stopped working. I don't have rules for vehicles yet. DM blue screen of death that JPEG. Make rules for cars, map for hitting armor truck, armor truck and armor truck crew. No augmentations, mid-range armor and <coughs> TSMGs. And still gonna probably murder the party. The armored truck part is the sticker. Hackett is axe sees the problem involved in hitting the armored truck without gear and Hackity Sacks does chatity chat and convinces the party to instead hit the facility. The DM spent all week making rules that will not be used. Thank f <coughs> God that PNG. DM happy as f <coughs> not see team try to break into an armored car with a shotgun, a pistol and the Decker's forehead as tools. I am immensely proud of my players. They've come from very little PNP role-playing experience, gone through the world of fantasy power hour in D&D 5th edition and entered the no magic cyberpunk setting with, admittedly, a little bit of death. Well, okay, a lot of death. Savage worlds can be, well, savage. Exploding damage dice are no joke, but they took it in good cheer and after this hiccup they proceeded to create a plan using their individual skills and strengths to break into the distribution center, steal the package and escape without a single problem. They are already better than most groups that I have seen make this sort of transition and they seem to be enjoying it. The fact that the plan started with hiring a horde of hobos to draw out security by running a mock in the customer lobby and ended with the hacker locking the police response in the building as the players left is just icing on the cake. <laughs> it's so nice actually that the story just has a happy ending. Um, yeah, I, I, I kinda was expecting to see a TPK at that point. <laughs> With the DM desperate to stop the party from doing that, somehow just, I don't give them more hints. And the players just being, I don't know, tunnel visioning on, yeah, we're gonna attack them at the stoplight. Yep, that's gonna work out well. <laughs> if it's stupid, but it works, it's not stupid. Be me, Pathfinder 2nd Edition Edgelord Elf Warrior. Be not me, Gnome Cleric, Human Totally Not Necromancer, and Human Swashbuckler. Exploring a lighthouse that's uh, definitely not haunted. Psych. An aberration made of blood appears out of nowhere. Oh shoot. Chris the swashbuckler. Oh shoot. Inflicts persistent bleed damage. Ah shoot. And gets a buttload of temporary health. Oh shoot. And then gets quickened. 
Calistra have mercy that JPEG. Fast forward a few turns and we have 4 health left, the cleric bleeding out on the floor, the nut necromancer on melee range and the swashbuckler hasn't rolled above a 5 the entire fight. The aberration has yet to run out of temporary health. The swashbuckler says f this sh takes the cleric and books it. You coward, that elf? Nah, it was the right call though, but elf's got the elf, drop down and the Nut Necromancer tells Skellington minion to take me out there. Books it herself and we're out of combat. Me and the Cleric are on death saving throws. Well, the Necromancer can throw for medicine and the Swashbuckler can help, right? Lol JK persistent bleed damage. The Necromancer drops down too. The Swashbuckler is untrained in medicine and has to save the entire party. Panic that JPEG tries to save the Cleric but doesn't roll good enough. The cleric dies and hero points kick in so she stabilizes at zero health. The swashbuckler tries to stabilize me next and gets a critical failure and kills me. Hero points kick in and we've cheated death once again. The necromancer manages to roll good saving throws before the swashbuckler kills another patient. The entire party is stable and the task was failed successfully. <laughs> a demonic body cup adventure. Be me, DM. Be not me, party of 6, but only two of them are important to this story, a reborn druid artificer and a lizard folk warlock cleric. Both of them have connections to demons, the reborn's body is inhabited by a red abishai and the lizard folk's patron is a fiend. Party are currently in the sewers of Sigil, city of doors, where portals to all planes can appear at random. We're in pursuit of a goblin thief with a dangerous book and as they find the goblin, the party is ambushed. The lizard folk takes big damage from an assassin and unknown to the rest of the party and me, if he takes enough damage, his patron takes over his body and basically goes feral. The party handles the ambush and the goblin escapes, but the feral lizard is still lashing out. The reborn steps in and lets the Abishai briefly take control of his body completely. Cue a shouting match between two demons inhabiting <laughs> random bodies. The Abishai basically tells the fiend to stop being a dickhead. <laughs> My face when that worked. The party continues the pursuit of the goblin and ends up going through a portal. The portal leads to Avernus. Shoot. Waiting on the other side is a horn devil. The rest of the party are able to grab the goblin and retreat. The last two left are the reborn and the lizard folk. The lizard folk tells the reborn to back off and starts to eldritch blast the devil. Can't even hit. Before running, the reborn casts sanctuary on the lizard folk to try to stop the devil from attacking him and then retreats but doesn't go through the portal. Lizard folk then begins his heroic last stand against the devil and gets badly injured and bleeding out but barely standing. The reborn decides that nobody dies today and heads back for the lizard folk, healing him and getting ready to pull him out of there. As a last ditch, the lizard folk uses his cleric skill to try and abjure the devil and get it to run away. My face when the devil fails the save and has become frightened by the lizard folk. The two of them retreat with the lizard folk making it back to the portal before the sigil collapses at zero hit points. The reborn casts spare the dying, stabilizing the lizard folk and just this once nobody dies. My face when two party members form the strongest of bonds from the weirdest of places. That was actually surprisingly nice. But alright, on that note we're gonna end the video here, so thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like if you did, and for more if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, also thank you a lot to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon, I appreciate it a lot, so thanks so much for that, as well as the support on YouTube from channel members. Thank you so much for those, links below if you wanna check those out, as well as links to the social media, discord, subscribe, and anything else. And uh, yeah, that's it, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye!